ladies and gentlemen, we have talked about four phrases. We have one left. We need to talk about infinitive phrases. They're on page 76 of your textbook. Here we go. First, let us identify an infinitive. An infinitive is always, always, two plus a verb. Two plus a verb. Two plus a verb. If the word to is not followed by a verb, then it's not an infinitive phrase. It's actually then a preposition phrase, because an infinitive phrase is always to plus a verb. An infinitive looks like a verb, but can act like an adjective, an adverb, or a noun. Just like all the other phrases, an infinitive phrase starts with the infinitive and may and often includes objects and modifiers. Let us look at some examples. The first sentence reads like this. To survive English class with Mr. Hepworth, you must steel yourself against his horrible face. That's a terrible sentence. Who wrote this? I did. Let us find the infinitive. To plus a verb. Two plus a verb. And just like before, we're looking for objects. What are we surviving? We are surviving class. We also need to include the word English and its class with Mr. Hepworth. So this is also a modifier. So we have the entire thing here. To survive English class with Mr. Hepworth. That is an infinitive phrase. The second sentence reads like this. Mr. Hepworth's dark soul likes to suck the warmth from the room. That's so happy. Here we go. We've got to plus a verb. We ask ourselves, what is the thing being sucked? It's the warmth. So we have to have the warmth. And where is this warmth coming from? The room. So the entire thing is to suck the warmth from the room. In infinitive phrase. The very last sentence reads, Mr. Hepworth's room is one of the few places in the school to come with warning signs. To come, there's our infinitive, and what does it come with? Warning sign. So this entire thing here is our infinitive phrase. Not too bad. Now, just like before, we still have to figure out exactly how it is acting. Before it was easy, though, because gerunds, they were always nouns. Participles were always adjectives. Infinitive phrases, on the other hand, have three options. They can be nouns, adverbs, and adjectives. This slide is super important. Write it down, and most importantly, write it down in this order. The very first thing that an infinitive can do is act like a noun. Just like any other phrase, it acts like a noun. We can always check to see if we have a noun phrase, if we can pull the entire phrase out and replace it with one of these words, this, that, someone, or something. That's the very first thing you should do. The second thing you should check for is to see if it's an adverb, because adverbs, often, but not always, adverbs can be moved around the sentence, usually from the front to the back or from the back to the front, or if it's in the middle, it can go either to the front or the back, but it can be moved around the sentence. That's important. If it's not a noun, if it's not an adverb, then chances are it's acting as an adjective. That's why we do these in this order, because there's not really a trick to see if it's acting as an adjective. So you have to do it in this order. One, two, three. Noun, adverb, and then an adjective. Let's check the sentences that we just talked about before. Remember, we're doing these in order. Noun, adverb, adjective. Here we go. The very first one goes like this. To survive English class with Mr. Hepworth, you must steal yourself against his horrible face. We've already figured out what our infinitive phrase is. Let's see if we can replace it with this, that, someone, or something. Can I take out this entire phrase and say, this, you must steal yourself. No. That, you must steal yourself. N no. Something, you must, no, no. None of those work, because this is not acting as a noun. Let's see if it's acting as an adverb. If it's acting as an adverb, we can move it. This one starts at the beginning of the sentence, so if it's acting as an adverb, I should be able to move it to the end of the sentence. So we could move it back here, right, right there. That's a terrible shape, but you get the idea. It could sound like this. You must steal yourself against his horrible face to survive English class with Mr. Appworth. And grammatically, it works. Now, it sounds weird because it's supposed to be at the front, but grammatically, it works because this is indeed acting as 
an adverb phrase. Let's look at the second one. Mr. Hepworth's dark soul likes to suck the warmth from the room. We always start with nouns. Let's take this entire phrase here and see if we can replace it with this, that, someone, or something. Mr. Hepworth's dark soul likes this. Yes, it does. Mr. Hepworth's dark soul likes that. Yes, it does. The reason these make sense is because this is indeed acting as a noun. A noun. A noun. We figured out it's a noun phrase, but let's just double check and let's, let's see if any of the other ones work. Let's check to see if it's acting as an adverb phrase. If it was acting as an adverb phrase, I should, I should be able to take this phrase and move it to the front over here. See, it's an arrow. The other one was supposed to be an arrow too, but get you. That was terrible. It could sound like this. To suck the warmth from the room, Mr. Hepworth's dark soul like. That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever because it is not acting as an adverb. Last sentence, it reads like this. Mr. Hepworth's room is one of the few places in the school to come with warning signs. First thing we're going to do is check to see if it's a noun. If this is acting as a noun phrase, we should be able to replace it with this, that, someone, or something. Let's try one. Mr. Hepworth's room is one of the few places in the school this. What? Let's try another one. Mr. Hepworth's room is one of the few places in the school something. It doesn't make sense because this is not acting as a noun. Let's see if it acts like an adverb. If it's acting like an adverb, I should be able to move it up here to the front of the sentence. To come with warning signs, Mr. Hepworth's room is one of the few places in the school. What? That doesn't make sense because it is not acting as an adverb. In fact, this is actually acting as an adjective phrase. Okay, I'm sorry, I don't know what happened. I just made all of the colors disappear and I did not want them to. Either way, this is not a noun phrase. It is not an adverb phrase. It is, in fact, an adjective phrase. There we go. Oh, sorry about that. Well, that's it. I hope that all makes sense. We've had five different phrases. You get all your notes on all of them now. If you got questions, come talk to me. See you later.